So for leadership per se, the eternal truths go back mm. many millennia. I mean, it's always who manages to motivate, inspire, and change. Mm -hmm. But since the Second World War, which many of the people who are listening may not even remember why we had a second. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a first before that. But post-war period was a time of democratizing many different things. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened in the world of organizations, too, mm -hmm. that had start we did a little history we go back to the railroads in fact harvard business school started as maybe a school of railroad management yeah. but we became something more and so there was a structure that was quite clear but the democratizing of organizations the idea of breaking through breaking out um i grew up um just after the organization man so both mm -hmm. constrained and also a creature of the organization and a man. And I didn't like that. And yet there were movements. I happened to be reading something by Warren Bennis the other day because of the book I'm writing, and I'm gonna try to put in a shout out where he said, boy, change is everywhere. He said that like 50 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned exactly the same kinds of changes we're coping with now whether it's racial justice. He may have mentioned women, but he talked about breaking organizational constraints. He talked about the environment. He talked about many things that are building communities, cities. He talked globalization. He talked about many things that are salient today. So I have merely traced an era, and I think that's an era where, even though there's a little bit of autocracy in mm -hmm. the world today, there's also pushback at autocracy, and it's a world where anybody feels that they can push back. Mm -hmm. They don't feel um, that they have to take it, mm -hmm. whatever is being given to them, and that's everywhere in the world. Now, sometimes they have to take it, and the protest goes underground. Mm -hmm. It's also true that protest by itself doesn't make change, mm -hmm. but it's a useful tool, mm -hmm. and I think we're in the world of the small, smart innovation. And that's what big companies have discovered and throughout my whole career, I helped them discover it. And I remember I talked to companies now that had had me in to you know, give a little dose of whatever wisdom there was to their managers who said, oh, you know, that was a little radical for us. That was the change masters where I talked about how do you get more innovation, which every established company craves, mm -hmm. and they're all trying to be like startups, buy startups. Well, the startup or the self-directed innovation, whether inside something established or outside something established, I think is the new wave of, of the evolution of democracy. Mm -hmm. It's not whether you vote, it's whether you create. And what made America a beacon for the world wasn't simply voter rights, because we weren't so good at that. It was participation yeah. at the community level. That's what de Tocqueville said about America. Gee, they're all forming associations to do something or other. And I don't think that self-help is totally the thing that will improve the world. We need a little boost from the established structures. We need a governmental framework that makes it work. We need established organizations that get it. But in fact, this idea that you can do it yourself. So when I said empowerment, it's now empowerment writ large. And that's what links all these ideas about leadership. So it's no longer, if we once had decades and millennia before we once had, except for the Athenian democracies, but we had emperors mm -hmm. and we had people who wanted to conquer and we had an awful lot of people that had no idea what was going elsewhere and they basically took it. Then we had a renaissance and we had more people who started to create and then we had the era of democracies, which are a little troubled now and we have to get it back, mm -hmm. but even so, it was a small number of people relatively. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's the era of the small, smart innovation. So my new book, um, which I'm madly working on right <laughs> now, um, which will be out around January 2020, is called Think Outside the Building. And 
that's an interesting metaphor for established structures um, because education isn't the classroom, health isn't the hospital, et cetera, et cetera. But the subtitle is how advanced leaders can change the world one smart innovation at a time. And so it's not just what individual entrepreneurs do, although some manage to transform the world right away because it's a big idea that capture, captures the mood of the time. But for others, it's one smart innovation linked to lots of other smart innovations that create a wave and do start to make change. Mm -hmm.